So let me talk a little bit about the human storytelling animal. We are completely hardwired to be storytellers. You know, back on the African savanna, this was our opportunity to find out about things and not actually have to experience them ourselves. If there was some sort of danger going on, you could just tell me a story and I wouldn't have to actually go through the danger. Or let's say there was some great crops or some great food that I could get. I could find out about that without the need to actually experience it. So we are hardwired for stories. And what happens is, is when we get some information, we have a tendency to put it inside a story. So let me show you an, an example of this. So, Arlene, what just happened? What just happened yeah. is an orange square inside of a box in a black, um, an orange triangle inside of a box. Uh -huh. There was a black triangle and a green dot outside of the box, and they moved in and out of the box. Yeah, so that's the quantifiable one. Did, did you have a different interpretation? Uh, um, the poor little dot was being picked on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what else happened? Um, the blue triangle was defending. Yes. The sweet little dot. Poor dot. Yeah, it was just terrible, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So here, here what we have is an example of the instinctual brain and the conscious brain. Arlene did a great job of telling me exactly what she saw. Yet we put an entire story to this is what we en ended up doing. So now, let me show you the power of this. I want to play you a story, okay? And I want you to watch yourself watch this story, okay? Yeah, right. Yeah. How about you? Uh, I don't know, really. Yeah, we were talking about maybe going down to the pub and seeing some bands or something, so... Yeah, I might do that. Yeah, that sounds good, actually. It's boring. Okay. So you're getting to know the people. So, let's continue. No. Yeah, all right, all right, come on. Yeah, all right. Gotta go. See ya. You got the keys? Yeah. Uh, well, now you got them. Bye. 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 She's so cute, Bella. She's sitting there with me. Bella's a great kid. Bye. Me too. Okay. What's coming? What's coming, Brent? What's coming? Something bad. Oh, it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be so bad. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. So, would you like me to stop here? Because it's gonna be bad. No, I don't think you do. You want me to keep going, right? Yeah. And this is the power of great stories. So, let's keep going. Oh, she's so cute, Bella. She's sitting there with me. Go with a great kid. Oh, <laughs> Hey, babe. Oh. <laughs> oh. Are you sure you should be driving? Yeah, fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike. Make up your mind. Is it fast or slow? Despite the fact this is going to hurt, you're like, I gotta see what happens. <laughs> That's because it was so incredibly valuable to get these stories. And it's why we are so incredibly compelled to do it. Okay, can you drive? <sighs> Crisis averted.
I'm sorry I did it to you again. Another car wreck, two in a day. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to actually do that. But it shows you how powerful these stories are. Did you feel the angst and the anticipation? It's like you were that people is what it's about. And so these stories are incredibly powerful. Here is the hit parade of the failed IPOs because what do IPOs have? A great story. They do. And people invest in them all the time. Yet despite the fact that they tend to do about 20% worse at the three year mark. And we do the same thing when we invest with, with people that we like. So here is Eric Yuan. He's got a great story. Nine times he applied to get into the United States before he finally got in from China. And when he finally got in, he was a huge success. So is Zoom a good investment? Who knows? A lot of people don't care. I just like Eric and I'm going to put my money with him. So what we know is that we have very powerful feelings towards stories. They can be used for harm, but they can also be used for good. And this is what we need you doing with your client, letting them tell stories. Because when they can tell stories about that dream home or that time with the grandkids, this is an opportunity for them to make it real, to make friends with that future self to truly understand them and to feel that joy. What we find when we do research on this is these people are more motivated to save and are more motivated to have a very bright financial future. Right now I'm working on another video on how cognitive bias tempts us to make bad financial choices. If you'd like to be alerted when that video is completed, just click on my face below to subscribe. And be sure to click that alert bell too. And I've created tons more videos on how brain science can help you make smarter money choices. Click on this box to see the full playlist. I'm Graham Newell and that's Better Decisions Through Brain Science.